So glad that, that you guys are here today. Just a couple things before we jump into the message. Number one, coming up this Tuesday is our 55 plus community gathering on Tuesday morning at 10. And so who is this for, my friends? Listen, if you're in a, in a season of retirement, you are welcome. We invite you to join us for our 55 plus community. Or maybe if you can get away from work for about an hour and nobody's going to know, we would be glad to serve you here on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. We have a great time with our 55 plus. And then also on Wednesday is youth night for our middle school and high school students. So we have a, a, a great night set up ready for them to, to connect with God, to grow in their relationship with God, and, and then also have a little bit of fun doing it together. And again, don't forget, we're in the midst of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I know maybe some of you haven't even taken a look at what it is that we're doing. The minute you heard fasting, you're like, I don't want anything to do with that. That doesn't sound like a word of God for me. No, listen, listen, just take, take, take a peek. If you're not participating, I, I encourage you to do so. And, and listen, if you're saying like, man, this is too easy for me. Hey, you can make the fast as hard as you want. Feel free to do it. But again, I just encourage you to take these 21 days of prayer to, to do that, to spend some time praying to God, to spend some time just connecting with his heart, to spend some time in his word. Because my friends, life comes from God. You know, Jesus shared an example once. He said, listen, he said he, he was talking, you know, back in those days, there was there was grapevines and, and people could see this in their everyday life. And, and so he said, take a look. He said, look at the grapevines. He said, listen, he says, you are, are, I am the vine and you are the branches. If the branch stays connected to the vine, he says, then what's on the vine will go to the branch and you will live a fruitful and blessed life. And so I want to encourage you to stay connected to Jesus connect with them, especially at the beginning of the year during these 21 days of prayer. It's a great way to create momentum in your life. That's what we're talking about here in the first month of the year. We're talking about momentum. What is momentum, my friends? It is energy that helps to create movement in your life. What are some ways that you can create momentum in your life spiritually, in your health, in your finances, in your relationships? How can you create some momentum that will lead you to what God has prepared for you this year? Two key truths about momentum. Number one, how do you create momentum? Because momentum will help you, my friends. It will help you to, it's, it's kind of like a snowball effect. Once you get it going, it moves and it, get, it, it moves in your direction. And so two key truths to momentum that we've learned. Number one, get moving. Just get moving. That's how you can start creating momentum in your life. Number two, be consistent. Whatever you start doing, keep doing it consistently. That will create more momentum, and ultimately that will lead to success in different areas of your life. And so today I want to continue that conversation, and I want to talk to you about what are, what are some other ways that we create momentum in our life. And so today I want to talk to you about choices. Choices create momentum. I remember some years back, I sat down with a, a young man. He was in his mid-20s, and, and, and he, he was telling me a little bit about his life. And, and he was telling me, he said, man, I'm just, I'm just really kind of really struggling right now. I'm a little bit down. And, and I said, well, talk to me. I said, well, what's going on? And he says, well... He says, you know, I'm having trouble in my relationship. He says, I'm not getting along well with my wife. You know, we're just, we're just not getting along. Things aren't going well. He says, I, I, I'm in some debt. I owe money in different places. And then he says, I'm also, he says, you know, because of something I did in my past, he says, I'm on probation. And so I just, I just really feel the weight of, of the world. And I just feel really, really discouraged. And, and, and I don't know what to do. And so I said to him, I drew a line in this, I, I drew, I, I pulled out a piece of paper, and I drew a line down that piece of paper. And I asked him a question. I said, do you like where you're at right now? And he says, no, I don't. He said, I don't like where I'm at. And I said, here's the good news. I said, it can change. Your life can change. You don't have to stay where you are. And so I drew this line on this piece of paper, 
And then I, I, I showed him and I said this, and, and, and I'll show you a diagram of this. Look, look at this diagram. And I said, listen, it said all the choices that you made as a 19 or 20 or young 20-year-old have led your life to where you are today. But your life doesn't have to stay that way because you can make better choices starting today that will lead to a better future tomorrow. And so if you'll start making some better choices in your relationship with your wife, your relationship is going to get a little bit better. If you make some better choices in your relationship with God, your relationship is the relationship with God is going to overflow into other areas of your life. And so I just began to encourage him that your choices from yesterday, your past does not determine your future. The choices that you make today determine your future. So yes, you may have made some mistakes. Maybe you've made some bad decisions. Maybe you made some poor choices in the past, but that does not mean that has to be your future. You can change your future starting today. Amen. And how? By making better choices. And so the choices, I, I want to I say this to you, because just like this young man who had found himself in his mid-20s, in a place where he didn't really like where he was, sometimes in our life, we don't like where we are. We don't like what we see in, the, in our relationships. We don't like what we see in our marriage. We don't like what we, maybe sometimes you look at yourself in the mirror and, and you don't like what you see. Maybe it's in your finances that you're just not where you would like to be. Listen, what's the good news? It can change. It can change. It does not have to stay that way. Your past, my friends, does not determine your future. The choices you make today determine your future. And so I want to talk to you about that. How do we create this momentum in our life by making better choices, by making better decisions in our life? See, we don't have to remain stuck in yesterday. We don't have to remain the same. We can experience better, a better life. We can experience better change and much more of what God has for us when we make wiser decisions. You see, good choices will create good momentum in your life because you can have momentum that works for you or you can have momentum that works against you. For instance, have you ever noticed how maybe before you go to bed, maybe you go to bed in a bad mood, right? You ever gone to bed in a bad mood? And you go to bed in a bad mood, maybe it's because of something that you have going on in your life. Maybe just you just had a bad day, and maybe you're just, you just, you, maybe you're just upset with life, right? And so you go to bed with this bad mood, and, and then all of a sudden what you're doing is actually you're beginning to create momentum for the next day. And so then when you wake up the next morning, you still have that, that mood. And so you still wake up with a bad mood. And, and then you just begin to think about the day ahead of you. I know this is not going to be a good day. And then your kids give you a hard time getting ready before you take them to school. You forget your coffee at home. You catch every light on the way to work. And it just, it just begins to build more and more momentum. You see, you see, momentum, that's the way momentum is. It, it starts small, but then it continues to add. But if you, if you look at it, momentum can work against you in a negative way, but momentum can also work for you in a positive way. You could go to bed at night and say, listen, it's, I had a tough day today, but tomorrow is going to be a new day. God's mercies are new every single day. Tomorrow is going to be better. And so you're already setting the tone for the next day. And so when you wake up in the morning, you wake up with that same attitude. Thank you, God, for giving me another day. I declare that this is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. And so, and so you're creating momentum. And how many of you, how many of you have noticed that, that when you wake up in the morning and maybe you, you start your day off with prayer, talking to God a little bit, it goes a little bit better than it did when you chose not to do it. I'm trying to tell you today, my friends, that choices make a big difference in our life. Choices create momentum. That's what choices do. 
Every single day, do you know that every single day we make thousands of choices? You know, at first you might think about that and you say, ah, that seems like a lot. But I want you to think about it. There are so many choices that we make every single day, and most of them are just very small ones. For instance, in the morning, you decide whether you're going to snooze the alarm or not. Some of you decide whether you're going to snooze one time, two times, three times, maybe even four times before you get up. You decide what you're going to do when you get up. You make a decision as to what you're going to wear. Where are you going to go on that day? What are you going to eat? You make all kinds of decisions. Are, are you going to check your, 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 your social media when you wake up? Are you going to check your email? There's so many decisions that we make every single day. You decide whether you're going to pick up coffee or get something to eat. You decide whether you're going to take the yellow light or not. You decide, am I going to be in a good mood today or am I going to be in a bad mood? Every day we decide, you know, you decide, am I going to talk to people today? Or am I going to not make eye contact and keep to myself? Am I going to smile and say hi or give them that look that I want to give them because of what they said earlier this week? How can you create positive momentum in your life, my friends, by the choices that we make? The choices we make every single day help to create momentum in our life. And some of those choices are small and then some of those are bigger. But I want you to just be a little more mindful of some of the decisions that we make every single day. And so real quickly, I just want to show you two truths that I believe the Bible shows us on how we can live out the plans that God has for our life. You know, our reading for today is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 through 13, that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and to give you a future. He says, you will, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Right there, there's choices. One, number one, God says, I've got something for you. I've got a plan for your life. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to harm you. You know, sometimes people think that God is trying to get them. Sometimes people think that God is trying to punish them for the sins of their past. But God says, no, he says, I've got a plan for your life. Do we need forgiveness for the sins of our past? Absolutely. Where do we find that forgiveness? At the cross where Jesus went to pay the price for our sins. But there's a choice, right? We can receive what Jesus did for us. And so here, here are just two truths that will help us, my friends. Number one, very simply, good thoughts. What affects your choices the most? Do you know what affects your choices the most? It is your thoughts that affect the choices that you make every day the most. So watch your thoughts closely because those thoughts become your choices and those choices determine your life. Your thoughts, my friends, inevitably become the choices that you make in life. And so let, let, let me show you this this real simple formula that just I want you to have in mind as you go about your daily life. Your thoughts plus your choices equals what? Your life. Your thoughts plus your choices equals your life. So watch your thoughts closely because your thoughts become your choices and your choices ultimately become your life. And so I want you to think about this in regards to different patterns in your life. What are there, do you have some habits in your life? Listen, do you know where those habits are coming from? They're coming from your thoughts. Whether those are good habits or bad habits, they start in your thoughts. And once you're thinking about something, that eventually leads to your choices, and that will create the life that you have. And so by being mindful of what it is that you think about, do you know that you can, you can resist temptation, you can overcome tem temptation, and it is by watching your thoughts closely. And it is by, by thinking about what you're thinking about. 
This is one of the reasons, my friends, that God wants to transform the way that we think. One of the key things that God wants to do in your life, the most important thing that God wants to do in your life is change the way you think. He wants to transform your thought life. Listen to the way he says this to us in Romans chapter 12. He says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. God wants to transform our life by changing the way we think. He wants to transform us from, from our past, from a, from a past that we may not like, into a better future by changing the way we think. He wants to lead us down the path that he has prepared for us. He says, my plans for you, he says, are not to harm you, but to prosper you. My plans for you are good. And he wants to lead us down that path. How, my friends? By changing the way we think. And this is not a one-time thing, you know what I mean? This is not like, hey, God changed, you know, maybe I've been walking with Jesus for 20 years or 25 years, and he changed the way I thought the first year. No, this is a daily deal. This is a daily thing. Why? Because our thoughts affect our choices, and our choices determine our life. And as long as we're living in this world, I, I mentioned to you this last week, as long as you're living in this world, there are three enemies that you're going to have to deal with every single day. Number one, you got to deal with the, the devil. Number two, you got to deal with the world. And number three, you got to contend with your own flesh. That will never go away until you breathe your last breath here and your next breath in eternity. And so thoughts plus choices equals your life. In Romans chapter 10, Verse 17, listen to what the word says. It says, consequently, faith, how many of you all want to have some more faith? It says, consequently, faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. When you hear God's word, my friends, what does it do? It grows your faith. The more of God's word that you hear, that you digest, that you read, the more your faith is going to grow. For instance, when you hear that God has a plan for your life and that it is good, you begin to desire it. I remember for the first 20 years of my life, I did not I never heard that God had a plan for my life. But when I began to hear God's word, that he had a plan for my life, something on the inside, my faith began to grow. And my faith began to desire that plan that God had for my life. What stirred that? What created that? Hearing God's word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. When you hear that God can heal sick bodies, you begin to believe that God can heal your sick body. When you, believe, when you hear God's word that says that it is his will that you prosper above all things and be in good health, you begin to believe and receive that for your life. When you hear that there is forgiveness available for all your past, you turn to the cross and you begin to believe that you can be forgiven. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. This is one of the reasons that we prioritize church. This is one of the reasons that we make this a part of our life, that this is one of our, our good habits that creates good momentum in our life. Why? Because we come to church to, to worship him, to give him thanks, and to hear God's word. This is also why we read the word of God, because the word of God is beginning to change the way we think. And this is why we read it consistently, because what, how do we create momentum in our life? We get moving, and we do it consistently. We do it consistently. You continue to read God's word, and God's word continues to help you in your life. And so again, just real quickly, just think about that truth, my friends. Think good thoughts. All throughout the Bible, we see the scripture teaches 
to, to, to meditate, to reflect on good thoughts. And one of the best ways to do that is to get into God's word, to hear more of God's word. Here's the second, here's the second truth that I want to share with you. How do you create momentum in your life? Good thoughts and good choices. Think about it. Just think about the good choices. Think about it. when you choose to walk or exercise three to four times per week, guess what? That's going to make you happier and is going to make you healthier. Do you know that when you get moving physically, my friends, your body, it, it, it gets happy when you move. You know, there, there's physiological truth to this. And so it's going to make you healthier and it's going to make you happier. When you choose to start your day with prayer and spend time with God, what are you doing? You are putting yourself in a better mood and you're setting a better tone for the day. You want to make good choices. Every day we make choices that determine what the outcome of our life is going to be. You know, I want you to think about choices because the Bible says that our choices are like seeds. Our choices are seeds that we are sowing into our life. And they're going to reap either something good or they're going to reap something bad. Listen to the way Galatians chapter 6 puts it. It says, a man reaps what he sows. He says, the one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit of God, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. In other words, my friends, if you want to step in to what it is that God has for you, you want to continuously sow good seeds. Because if you sow those good seeds, then what's that going to mean? You're going to reap a good harvest in your life. And the scripture goes on to say there's going to be days when you get tired. There's going to be days when you feel like giving up. There's going to be days when you're offering forgiveness to others, but people aren't forgiving you. There's going to be days when you're kind to others and they're not being kind to you. There's going to be days when you turn the other, other cheek and it's going to be hard. But the scripture says, do not get tired in doing what is good. For at the right time, you will reap a good harvest if you don't give up. In other words, just keep sowing good. Just keep sowing good. And God will cause those seeds to grow in a good way. And so if you want to see change, for instance, maybe with your kids, you want to see a, just a, maybe a, a deeper bond, a stronger relationship, maybe what you can do is, is sow more love, spend more time with your children. That's ultimately what means a lot to kids. If you want to maybe change your financial situation, what can you do? Take a step of faith to honor God in your tithes, increase your offerings, put a budget in place, that those are good seeds. Those are good seeds that are going to create something good tomorrow. Again, if you want to see some change in your health, what are some better choices that you can make every day? Just choices, just small things that you do consistently that add up over time and create a positive result in your life. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, listen to what God said. He says, I planted the seed. Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. God made it grow. You know, one of the, one of the principles or truths that, that Amory and I live our life by is right here, what I'm talking to you about. Is we want to honor God with the choices that we make. We want to honor God with the decisions, the seeds that we're sowing, and we trust and we know that God will water those seeds and he'll cause those seeds to grow that will ultimately bless our life. When you make right choices, you're sowing good seeds in the ground and God is going to cause those seeds to grow and to bless your life. So I want you to think about that. Just keep thinking about that. Again, what are we talking about? Momentum. How do you create momentum? You get moving and you be consistent. Just keep being consistent in your walk of faith with God, in your relationship with God, in the kind of seeds that you are sowing. We make all kinds of choices every single day, and you want to be mindful of those choices, mindful of the choices that you made. You know, I remember uh, 
the vehicle that I had before, I had a, I had a, a truck, and I had this truck for about 12 and a half years, right? And, um, and I never, I, 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 called it the, I called the truck my Malachi 310 truck. I called it my Malachi 310 truck because, you know, I, ended, I put about 100, I put 125,000 miles in that vehicle, and it, it never gave me any major problems. And, uh, and while I had that vehicle for those 20, 20, 12 and a half years, I never, ever changed the brake pads or the rotors on my truck. And, and I remember, and typically on a vehicle, you know, that may, they may last anywhere between 30 to 50 or 60,000 miles, something like that. And you have to change them out. And so I remember, you know, during that time, I, you know, I was maybe around 50,000 miles. I went down to the to the shop, get an oil change, and, and I had the guys, I was, hey, man, can you check out my brake pads, you know, make sure I'm good, this and that, whatever, and they checked them out, and they said, no, you're good, man, you still got about 75% of life on them. I was like, praise God. <laughs> Anyhow, about 75,000 miles, I'm like, man, surely I must have to change these already, so I said, uh, I said, Let, so I pulled up, and I said, hey, man, can y'all, you know, while you're there, just go ahead and check my, my brake pads and see how everything looks down there, and they came back and they tell me, no, man, everything looks good. There's no trouble there at all. And then about 100,000 miles, I did the same thing. I said, I said, well, I said, wherever I go, nobody's hearing me show up. So something must still be okay. Anyways, I, said, I took it back in. I said, hey, can you guys check them out, make sure everything's good. And they came back and said, man, brake pads are fine, rotors good, nothing, that there's no problems there. Finally, about 125,000 miles, I went in to trade in my vehicle and and, you know, when you trade in your vehicle, they, they do a thorough inspection, right, to make sure that you're not giving them a, you know, a piece of trash, right? <laughs> and so anyway, so, so they did a, a thorough inspection on that. They had no problem with it. I was able to trade in my vehicle without any trouble. You know, and I, I called it my Malachi 310 truck, my friends, because the scripture says that when you sow the seeds of faithfulness in your tithe, that God will pour out such a blessing that you cannot con. Tain it. And so what I saw in that is the seeds that we were sowing in the ground was causing God to bless me and to bless our vehicle. God, listen, listen to the way the scripture says it in Malachi 3.10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour it so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. When we plant the right seeds, God causes those seeds to grow and to bless our life. That's what happens. And a lot of times we don't know when the harvest of those seeds are going to come back. And we don't even, the Bible doesn't say it's going to come back a certain way, only a certain way. But he says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing. And you don't even know how that blessing is going to touch your life. It could bless your children to have good opportunities. It could bless you to have a good and long and healthy life. It could bless your finances. It can bless your business. It can bless your marriage. There is no limit to the blessing of God and what it will touch in your life. What did it touch in my life? It touched my vehicle, my friend. It can, it can do that and so much more in our life. And so what am I talking to you about today? What good choices can you start or sowing and what good choices can you continue sowing in your life? Remember, my friends, our choices ultimately affect our life. They determine our life. And so think about, you know, think about, think about, the, think about the spouse that you choose to say I do to, Right? Better take, take a good look. <laughs> Do they have a job? Do they like to work? Or you're just going to be in love, but poor, is, poor can be. <laughs> right? You, you want to make wise choices. You know, think about the friends you keep company with. The Bible says bad company corrupts good character. And so you want to be mindful of who are the friends that you're around. Think about the team you root for. It could cause you to suffer a lot. <laughs> think about the, <laughs> think about the choices that you made. 
I'm sorry, that just, you know. I'm still working through that all right from last week, okay? Been working through it for almost 30 years, but we're going to be all right. You can choose to wake up 15 minutes earlier and spend time with God, right? You can choose to pray with your wife and your family. Those are seeds that are going to produce something good in your life. You know, I, I, I've shared how one of the things that I do with, with, with my kids, with my daughters, is I'm, I'm always blessing them, always speaking blessings over them. You know, before they go to bed, I bless them. When they go to school, I just I bless them. They walk by me, I just touch their head, and I say, I bless you in Jesus' name. Because I understand the power of blessing. I don't know what those seeds are creating, but I know they're going to create something good. Because God has given me the authority, not just me, but you as well, to speak in his name, to declare blessings in his name. And so I'm blessing by faith in the name of Jesus. You can choose, my friends, all kinds of things, right? There's choices that we make, and a lot, some of them are little choices that we don't really see a whole lot of the effects of them, but some of them are bigger choices. And so, again, all I'm doing, all I'm encouraging you to do today, today my friends, is, is to continue to create good momentum in your life. You know, think, I, I want to encourage you to, to have good thoughts. Watch your thoughts closely. Why? Because your thoughts become your choices, and your choices ultimately become your life. You may have some things, that maybe some choices that you made in your past. The good news is, my friends, there's forgiveness at the cross. There's mercies that are new every single day. Your past, it does not determine your future, my friends. But the choices you make today will determine where you end up tomorrow. Come on. Do you all receive that with me here today? Let, let, let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for your word that that increases our faith, Lord. Your word that gives us more faith to believe in you and to believe what you want to do in our lives. Your word says, Lord, that your plans for us are good. Not to harm us, but to give us hope and to, to give us a future. And I pray, Lord God, for every one of us here and everyone watching online, that you would give us the faith to pursue after that, that you would give us the desire, Lord God, to pursue you Help us, Lord God, to, to watch our thoughts closely. Help us to meditate on good thoughts. Help us to make good and wise decisions, Lord God, so that we can arrive at the places that you have for us tomorrow. And I pray, Lord God, that if anyone is here today or watching online, Lord God, if they do not know who you are, if they have yet to receive forgiveness for your sins that you already paid for, I pray that today is that day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen. Let's take a quick moment right now. Let's take a moment right now because I, I know that in here right now or watching online, there, there are many of you who you've sowed the seed of faith in Christ and that has caused you to receive forgiveness for your sins and caused you to receive eternal life. What a blessing. What a harvest you and I have received. But I also know there are some of you maybe who you have yet to do that. Maybe you've been putting this decision about God aside. Maybe you've been procrastinating. Maybe you've been saying, no, God, uh, God, I'm not worthy of God. I'm not worthy of his forgiveness. I'm not worthy of his love. Listen, my friends, Jesus loves you more than you can possibly imagine. That's why he went to the cross. He went to the cross so that you might be forgiven of your sins. So you might receive a new beginning, a new life. Let's take an opportunity to do that right now. How do we receive this, my friends? It's a seed of faith. We turn to the cross in faith, and we receive what Jesus came to do for us. And so let's do that together right now. Can we do that? Right where you are, just, just, just bow your heads, and let's pray this together. Just say this to me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I receive eternal life. And so, Jesus, today, I place my faith on you. I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Now help me to walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, 
amen and amen. Amen. Well, listen, my friends, if you have made that decision today or recently, this is a new day. This is a new beginning. The Bible says this is the beginning of a new season in your life, a season of a personal relationship with God through Christ. And so I want to encourage you, if you have made that decision today, I want to encourage you to, to, to let us know. If you go to our app and let us know that you've made a decision, if you're watching online, please click on one of those links and, and text us and let us know. And we would love to send you a gift to help you in your personal relationship with God. We want to help you to grow. We want to help you to step into more of what God has for your life. And so wherever you are, even in your journey of faith, maybe you're just beginning, maybe you've been walking with Jesus for many years. Listen, keep going. Keep getting up. Don't get tired of doing what is good. For at the right time, at the appointed time, you will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Amen? Church, why don't you guys stand to your feet? Again, don't forget this coming week, we got 55 plus on Tuesday, youth night on Wednesday. Continue with our prayer and fasting. Get into that reading plan. And, and then, um, what else? Yeah, that's it. I think so. Oh, don't forget our prayer team is here in the front. If there's anything you want to pray about before you leave, our team would be more than glad to pray with you. But as you leave, my friends, I bless you. I bless you in Jesus' name that you would be well, that you would be strong, that you would be healthy, that you would walk in victory and not in defeat. I declare that you're the head and not the tail. I declare you'll rise above and not be beneath the circumstances of this life. I bless you that it would go well with you in Jesus' name. In Amen and amen. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.